Welcome to Save Your Sanity, help for handling hijackles, those difficult, toxic, and often disturbing people in your life. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I'm here for you. You'll get the insight, skills, strategies, and support to stop tolerating verbal and emotional abuse, whether it's happening now or it happened to you in the past, maybe by a parent, partner, ex, relative, or even a coworker. Time to take life back, to recover and to rediscover you, your values, dreams, desires, and realize them in healthy ways in healthy relationships. I'm so glad you're here. Hello. I'm glad you're here. I hope that you've heard other episodes and that's what caused you to come along. And if someone shared this with you and you find value with it, please thank them and offer to share it with others as well. There's an epidemic going on in our world. We can see it in many, many places in many countries where there are people who think they have the right to tell other people how to behave, tell them what to think, tell them how to feel. In fact, tells them how they do feel, how they should feel. And these are inappropriate things. It is not our right to tell other people what they think, what they feel, who they are. It just simply isn't. And yet that's what hijackles do. You know, hijackles is my term for all the people with patterns, traits, and cycles of um, those people who are narcissistic, passive aggressive, antisocial, histrionic, borderline. Uh, all of those traits will come up. It doesn't matter about a diagnosis, of course. Uh, that's not going to help, and the person is not likely going to go anyway. And it's highly likely that you're not a psychological professional, a mental health professional, so don't bother with diagnoses. Just simply know that those behaviors that these people are engaging in have to be seen. That's why I have a program, a self-study program with videos and self-reflective questions and things. It's called Seeing the Cycles. And you can find that on my website at forrelationshiphelp.com, F-O-R, relationship, H-E-L-P.com. Look for the, under the programs and products, it says, seeing the cycles in the store. And that way you can have a good look. If you want a fast look, go and download my free ebook, How to Spot a Hijackal. You'll find that at hijackals.com. How do you spell hijackals? Hijack. H-I-J-A-C-K-A-L-S dot com, hijackals dot com. So there's lots of resources for you. But if you are wondering, you know, there's a tendency to be hearing all these things and then trying to wish them away or think them away or deny them or say, yes, but, or make excuses for the person. No, it really is time. You don't have any more time to live under the delusion that this person is going to change. They are not going to change. I know. That's not what you want to hear. That's not what you want to believe because you've invested time, energy, money, pain, all of that but they are not going to change. They have no willingness to change. Yes, a few of them are not actually hijackals. They only know how to behave like a hijackal. And sometimes I can help them because they're willing to help. They're willing to say, I don't know how to do it differently and I want to. And then we can work. But the majority of people who fall into the hijackal category are so sure and so needing to be sure because they're so shamed and angry and had such a difficult early life that they are so sure that they are right. They have to be right. They have to be the one who knows. They have to be the one who has power and control over you. And if this is sounding familiar, then jump in. Come in and look at my work. Look at my YouTube channel for Relationship Help. Every Monday night there, I have a live stream. So you can join in and ask your questions, make your comments. So much for you, if this makes sense. So today I want to talk about something that really exists, and it is the boomerang of blame. <laughs> and why difficult people always make it your fault. Hijackles will make everything your fault because they take no responsibility and have no accountability for anything negative. Yes, they'll be happy to take all the credit for something, but that's entirely different, right? 
So today, some practical insights into why these difficult people make everything your fault and what to do about it. You know, my clients will come in and I have clients all over the world because I work through video conferencing and they'll say the same thing. It's crazy making. No matter how wrong he or she is, it somehow ends up being my fault. That's what I hear from them. Everything is always their fault. And that's because they're in relationships with the relentlessly difficult people that I call hijackals. There's a reason. Hijackals cannot possibly entertain the idea of being wrong or even taken as mistaken. It's not that they don't mess up. It's that they cannot allow themselves to be less than perfect and right. Their egos are fragile, very fragile. Yes, I know that seems hard to believe because they're so certain, so assertive, and often so aggressive. And yet things that have happened to them in their young lives have made them feel so easily shattered, even with their offensive and defensive shells intact. I know, it's hard to believe, but that's a topic for another time. That doesn't mean that just because you understand they have been through difficulties in their life that you have to accept these outrageous behaviors. No, you don't. We can have compassion for somebody having a difficult time without condoning or enabling their continuing poor behavior choices. So hijackals have been damaged in ways that cause them to be hypervigilant. They are hypervigilant. They're always on the lookout for being hurt, for being blamed, for being wrong. And they are not going to be caught off guard, not going to be surprised or blamed or wrong. To keep their sense of rightness in their internal worlds, that simply can't happen. They can't be surprised or caught off guard or blamed or wrong. Therefore, what? You must be the one at fault. It's kind of like they say, obviously, there are only two of us here and there's nothing wrong with me, so it must be you, right? Faulty logic, crooked thinking, but they still do it. And it's frustrating and it's infuriating. And yes, it's inaccurate. And that's where the crazy making and the unfairness begins. And there's no end to it. You've noticed that, I'm sure, if you've been around one. Whether that's your parent or a partner or an ex or someone unreasonable in your family or at work. Because that crazy making and the unfairness that goes with it is just ongoing. Blame becomes a preoccupation for hijackals. Their immediate response to it is to reject it and deflect it. That means, of course, boomerang of blame, it's coming back your way. Now let's take a little example. Even something as factual and innocuous as, you said you would pick the kids up from mums by five o'clock. Simple, factual, but it's met with, It's not my fault. If it was so important for you that that happened on time, you were perfectly capable of picking them up by rearranging your schedule. (gasps) Right? You've heard that. Crazy making. Mind blowing. Are you kidding? That's how you feel, right? So let's just look at the lack of logic and the crooked thinking. You say, simply stating a fact, You said you would pick the kids up from mums by five. And what does the hijackal say? It's not my fault. If it was so important for you that for that to happen on time, you were perfectly capable of picking them up by rearranging your schedule. Crazy. Nothing lands on them. They won't allow it. They simply make sure that nothing lands on them. Allowing even the slightest blame to land on them is unthinkable. It's almost like they sense there's a mortal emotional danger in it. And there's reasons for all this, but as I said, another, another podcast episode. 
this sense of mortal emotional danger, their fears dominate them. And they cause that hypervigilance that I was talking about. You know, things have happened to them to make them that way. Not your fault. Didn't happen by you. Happened when they were young. But you are the one that is being blamed. You are the one that is getting the result of this. And you really have to stand up on your back legs and say, "Uh uh-uh, no, this is not going to happen. And you don't do that by arguing with them. You do that by having strong boundaries. Now, I have got lots of podcasts about boundaries and lots of YouTube videos around it. So remember, just go to my website, forrelationshiphelp.com, or the YouTube channel, For Relationship Help. You'll find them all. If you don't have good understanding and willingness to set and maintain good boundaries, things are continually going sideways. And so you need to step up and take responsibility for setting those boundaries. And no, hijackals don't like boundaries. They hate boundaries from other people. They love them for themselves, but they hate meeting other people's boundaries or having a boundary laid down by another person. Yes, they hate it, but you deserve to have a sane life that is not filled with crazy making. So the step you take is to have strong boundaries. Now, different types of hijackals fear different things, and some of them fear all of these things. Maybe they fear the fear of abandonment, or they're afraid of feeling or being inferior, or they, they hate being ignored and not being the center of attention, and they loathe the idea that anyone would have control or power or dominance over them, loathe it. They just simply cannot allow those things to happen. Cannot. So your comment of fact, you know, the one that I gave as an example, so simple. Um, you said you'd pick the kids up by, from mom's at five o'clock. No blame. Just a comment of fact. That comment that has the vaguest possibility of them having made a mistake causes an immediate boomerang of blame. It cannot be allowed to land on them. So what? It has to be returned to you. And usually with some added force or pressure and more than a little vitriol and anger and upset and choice words too. So you can see how they must have a theme song. It must be there ain't no flies on us. Remember that old camp song? But although they're as human as everyone else, and and I guess just as prone to being flypaper, they simply cannot allow anything to stick to them. They personalize everything, and with their deep, deep, long-ago-seated fears, these things, these personalizations, anything that looks like blame cannot be tolerated. And again, therefore, it's your fault. It has to be. Is this making sense? I know it's very, very specific, but it's happening all the time in small and large ways in your relationship if you're with a hijackal or if you had a hijackal parent. Even though you may be far away from that hijackal parent, The tapes that you heard when you were young can still be playing in your head. So once you realize this, it's a big moment because then you can take control. You can change your approach. Yeah, I know. Why does it always have to be you who changes? Yes, it's unfair. However, we're talking about saving your sanity, not the hijackal sanity. So yes, you can change your approach. And you know it's not going to be your favorite hijackal who changes. So unfortunately, it's you. So what do you do? You focus on the behavior you want them to have moving forward rather than on the behavior you're currently upset about. Got that? So you're not going to focus on the he did me wrong thing. You are going to focus on the behavior you want from this moment forward. 
So let's go back to the mom picking up the kids example. So you might say this, when mom has the kids, she really appreciates them being picked up on time. Let's be sure and do that so she'll continue to watch the kids for us. Okay, do you see how that's very different? When mom has the kids, she really appreciates them being picked up on time. Let's be sure, so you're including yourself in it, let's be sure and do that so she'll continue to watch the kids sometimes. No blame, no losing face, no being wrong. It equals a likely, a higher likelihood that the kids will be picked up on time next time as agreed because there's something in it for the hijackal. He wants your mom to look after the kids. He wants that spare time. He wants that extra help, or she wants it, whichever gender your hijackal is. So it's a way of having no blame. The hijackal doesn't lose face. They haven't been told they're wrong. They haven't been picked on. And they can agree, okay, we could do that because they are not. They haven't gone downhill and sideways to start into their anger. You are just future pacing. That's what we call it. You're future pacing the behavior. You see the problem. Instead of talking about the problem, you talk about what the better behavior would be moving forward. Now, this is just one strategy and there are others, but I don't want to go into too many because you need to practice just one. And this can start to change things for you because you will feel stronger. You will feel like you are assertive. You will feel like you have contributed to the relationship moving forward to a positive place. So this one thing of focusing on the behavior you want them to have moving forward rather than focusing on the behavior you're upset about right now. No, there's no guarantee it'll work. It's just a better strategy. I don't know your hijackal, so I don't know how hijackally that person is. But you will feel empowered. You will feel better. You will know you're doing the best thing you can do in the face of that behavior. And then you'll see whether the hijack will, will change, will take it on. We'll see that as a possibility. It's a very good start. And you'll feel better too because you haven't unwittingly unleashed the boomerang of blame. And I don't remember where I heard the term boomerang of blame. Perhaps it was from Bill Eddy or one of my other colleagues. Um, so I don't want you to think it's my term. I did borrow it, but I can't find out where I got it. So the boomerang of blame is not fair. But life with a hijackal is seldom fair. So if you want to stay with one or see if you can possibly improve things with one, you're the one who has to be strategic. So I hope this helps you because when you want to talk about something difficult and the other person has done something that you don't like and that other person has hijackal tendencies, you know you're going to wear it. You know it's going to come back at you. You know somehow, somewhere, and quite instantly, it is going to be your fault. So I hope I've done a good job of explaining to you why difficult people make things your fault. It's about them. It's not about you. And you need to be very clear. Now, of course, there are lots of pieces to this puzzle. And that's why I invite you to go to the YouTube channel and come over to the website. So I hope that I will see you there. Uh, subscribe to this podcast for sure so that you uh, get on the list and you hear about each new episode. Invite your friends to come along. Come all over every Monday evening at 6 o'clock Pacific time to my live stream show. It's called Help for Toxic Relationships over there on YouTube. My channel is For Relationship Help. In fact, go over there right now youtube.com slash for relationship help f-o-r relationship h-e-l-p and subscribe a great thing about youtube is that when you subscribe to something that is already planned which the live streams are it will send you a reminder an hour before so you don't have to be concerned also if you want my help 
you can work with me directly. You can learn all about that at forrelationshiphelp.com. Also, though, I have a membership program. And if you want to get off Facebook and be safe to have your conversations and ask your questions, I really invite you to come over and join my membership program. You'll find that at optimizecircles.com. Optimize circles with an S dot com. So, so much for you. I'm here for you. I've been there, done that. I have the nasty video. I have the ripped t-shirt. I have it all. And because this is my work and I have a PhD in psychology, I am dedicated to helping you see what's going on with these hijackles and to know what your best next steps are. I hope today has been helpful. I look forward to talking with you soon. And in the meantime, Take good care of yourself because you matter. Talk soon. I'm so glad you spent this time with me today. I hope you heard something that touched your heart and empowered you to move forward. You can have the life and relationships that you most want, and that begins with you within you today. I'm always here for you. Life can get better, and you heard that from me, the Relationship Help Doctor. I'm Roberta Shaler, and I work with clients throughout the world through video conferencing. We can talk. So learn more at 4relationshiphelp.com, F-O-R, Relationship, H-E-L-P.com, or visit me on YouTube at 4 Relationship Help. Join me for next week's show.